Hi, and let's uh, work a little bit on ballad playing. Just a few demonstrations of things that are in chapter 22 of the Real Jazz Pedagogy book. You should definitely check that book out because uh, this is only a few uh, aural representations of things that are written out there, but you should get the full picture in the book. Uh, let me start a ballad that I'd like to play. Just a little bit of it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> These are written straight eight notes. Now I don't really want to play that uh, that way every time. I might get away with I, with playing straight eight notes a time or two if I inflect them, maybe like this. A singer might do, but I want to take that pat that that melodic fragment and figure how many ways can I do this. So let me try rhythmic stuff first. How about uh, reverse? Uh, maybe. An example of back phrasing where I wait and then I move faster. So I can try different rhythmic per permutations of that. I can also uh, try different melodic permutations. Where I try other notes around the existing notes. I don't want to obscure the real notes but just add uh, ideas to them. If I take the next phrase, all eighth notes. Well, I don't probably want to do that twice, especially, so. Let's see, how many different ways can I play this? Also, I want to see what can I do with inflection. Maybe I go. Uh, what other notes can I add? What other inflections can I add? What other rhythms rhythms can I use? So that would be a critical part of ballad work: is working through every phrase of the melody, coming up with many different ways that I can play the same phrases. I don't really want to play any of them twice the same way. Well, maybe maybe once again, but I, I don't want to just play them the same way every time. And if I play in a combo and I'm playing a ballad on the way in, on the way out, I'm going to play that same phrase six times. Uh, three, three times on the A on the way in, three times on the A sections on the way out. So I've got to have many different ways of, of playing those things, and that would be the first thing I would do to work on the ballad is learning how to play the melody. I'd also want to listen to singers sing that melody and see if I can get some ideas uh, because singers always have interesting ways and we want it to sound like we are singing. Uh, <clears throat> then I'm going to work on the improvisation of that. That's going to be the same kind of thing that, that we do uh, with the other tunes where we have to play the chords, play the scales, maybe work on some ways of maneuvering through those scales and chords in different ways. Uh, not really setting anything, just working on different kinds of uh, routing through those chords so that I have different ways of routing, but also where I've kind of just established uh, a, more of a, an ability to route, and then I can route on the spot. Uh, at the end, though, we're probably going to do a cadenza. Uh, there are many different ways uh, that you can do cadenzas, and uh, I've got a lot of ways indicated there in chapter 22, a lot of thoughts to think about. I might just illustrate that if I was playing this tune, I would come to the cadenza probably on the two chord. Switch to the five chord. Which 
which is just a diminished chord based on the three five seven and flat nine three five flat seven flat nine uh, every dominant chord of the flat nine has a diminished seven chord built into it this is an a7 i'm playing so i'm playing a c sharp diminished seven right there then i might move to a to a diminished scale <laughs> different patterns that can be done on that. I've got some of those patterns written out in chapter 22 that you can check out. And ultimately I'd probably show, end up on a super low crayon. I might even get into some whole, into some whole tone or uh, augmented chords. whole tone we often do triad pairs but I probably will end up somehow on the super low crown to the tonic in a clear way. That's probably where the band re-enters. I want to do some kind of a fill on that last note and, from, and then I want to, want to come to a rest on a, on a, a cool sounding note. Like the major seven. major seven coming to the nine we don't want to come to end on the root the root would be the worst note you could play other than the fourth note of the scale of course fourth note of the scale is always the worst note you could play on a major chord or a dominant chord the next worst no note on a major chord is the root especially on an end chord like that you just don't want to do that I'd play a pretty note the pretty notes are the high tension notes so uh, maybe I try the sharp 11. So uh, those are kind of the elements of the ballad. I need to learn to play the melody. I want to learn to play it with many different permutations. And then I need to learn to improvise on the, on the ballad. And I've got to come be able to play a cadenza and then I've got to play something cool on the last note and I, uh, some kind of a feel and then I want to come to rest on a pretty note. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate an ending here with this, uh, with this tune. stop that. I tried to use, uh, I didn't know what the ending was going to be actually, but I tried to use a little bit of, of uh, color on that dominant, altered dominant chord on the end, and then uh, came to rest on the tonic chord on both the major seven at first and then on the nine so that you could kind of uh, hear a couple of pretty notes on the end. That might help to get a feel for the, for the last uh, uh, part of the, of the tune, of the ballad. Hopefully this is helpful.